Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Grand Masculine Podcast with me, your host, Finn McKenna Fox. So today I'm really excited to bring this episode with the wonderful Nadia Daly from Feel Good Daily. This is a conversation that has been coming for a while for myself. Um, yeah, Nadia does such amazing work up in Northern Ireland where she holds women's circles and red tents um, for beautiful, beautiful women all around. And it was actually Shona who went along to one of her events um, just after we arrived back to Ireland from Australia. And like she felt so held and nurtured and just being able to connect with women in that way was so beautiful. And that was the start of myself and Nadia starting to communicate and just been having this beautiful relationship on Instagram of being able to share and support each other and the work that we do. Um, but yeah, this conversation was packed full of so many nuggets. So definitely anyone who is in a relationship, um, this is a very, very important listening because we talk about so much about the dance between the masculine and the feminine in a relationship and that need, that want, that desire for support to be held, to be seen, to be loved. And I think a big thing was about coming back to that, to open an honest connection and conversation. It's such a big missing piece for so many of us because the truth of the matter is, is like parenthood is bloody challenging. And it's like so often like the mother is really struggling as well as the father. It's like, and both of you come back to this feeling of just never doing enough. But in doing so, that can bring up a lot of our wounds, that can bring up a lot of our shadows and we put up the walls around us and we end up pushing each other away because of that and we're getting triggered by each other. Whereas the more we're able to come back to ourselves, come back to ask ourselves what we need in the moment, how we can support ourselves to then support each other, it's so fucking important and both myself and Nadia share our journey on this and how it doesn't come naturally for us because some of our so much of our conditioning but also some simple things that you can start doing some conversations that you can start opening up with your partners to break down the walls and make it more accessible for yourself and the positive positive ripple effects that will come and play when you do so so enough of my ramblings for now it's quite a long conversation I'll let you get stuck in but before you do just remember for any guys who are listening who feel like needs for that extra support and want to be able to show up and transform how you show up in fatherhood please feel free to reach out as i have the grounded father program which is kicking off the end of may and going to be a few other things coming up over the coming months to support fathers in a deeper way so if that is something that you feel like you want some extra information on the support on just shoot me a message I'm on Instagram or email and enjoy the rest of the episode. Thank you. Beautiful. And we are live. We've made it. We've made it. Yeah. <laughs> we were just laughing at this has been a quite a long time coming, this this conversation um mm -hmm. with myself and you, Nadia. And like you were saying, like it's just the perfect reflection of parenthood. <laughs> it was just one thing after another over the last month, pretty much, um, where we just had to push it back. Uh, so we're here. We made it. And we're here. And do you know what? We were understanding of each other, which was lovely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which was exactly. really nice. Yeah. Awesome. So before we get into our conversation, like one of the first things that I love asking people about, and um, first of all, is what does being grounded mean to you? Mm, I did have a little dabble through your podcast. <laughs> and I knew this was coming. And, you know, when I first heard the question, I thought it's something around peacefulness. Mm. And then I've, I've really, it's a great question. Um but it has brought me really back to, I was like, when have I been most grounded? And I thought peacefulness is very, to me, very silent, mm. right? So that wasn't quite fitting, right? So I, I was like, when have I felt most deeply attached to everything? And it has to be childbirth. Oh, boom powerful it has to be and I was fortunate enough to be surrounded by intuitive women but also I don't know how I was lucky enough to be intuitive myself from my first birth but I have never felt so a part of everything and very much powerful and connected and valued mm. by myself in like a really inclusive way in terms of 
I mean, I'm talking like expansive, like beyond what I did have two hospital births, but beyond the hospitals, beyond nature, beyond like it just felt like I was part of the whole system. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you've witnessed a few births. Like, and that's it. Like, it's just, it's literally when, like, when you're in the thick of it and in the throes of it and like you're just in your body like it's like you're literally like it is this it that is the epitome of just being grounded because you're just so in tune with everything within yourself and fucking in your power like it's amazing there is a there is a yeah i I probably have never been as in my body that was a that's a good that's a good way to put it but the also in my body in my power but in absolute surrender mm. as well yeah it, it's it is euphoric yeah you, you know uh yeah so i just yeah that's probably when i have felt most grounded yeah. and what that's groundedness to me that's yeah it can be it can be loud it can be quiet the focus it's it's yeah it's it was euphoric and I was like mm, that's when yeah amazing and how do you feel like you've like from your births how have mm-hmm. you felt like you've brought that and continued the learning and the wisdom you've gained from them into what it is that you do now mm-hmm. so I would say in all honesty from my birth there was an unraveling after that in maybe uh, a losing of myself, yeah. a death of myself that I didn't know how to navigate until it was too late, till my navigation system was offline and I was burnt out and, and just not well and um and really in survival. Yeah. But I think And then I was like sort of knowing that this part of me existed, this kind of surrendered me, but yet warrior me was there. And, um, but yet I was so, so broken Mm. after birth. Yeah. Cause, cause it's really hard. Uh, um, And then it's the rebuilding of that. uh, That has sort of connected the knowing them. That yeah. I could feel like that. Yeah. To practicing that as a real life human female in today's society with everything going on. And then, you know, COVID allowed us a little bit of space, didn't it? Mm. Kind of think, oh, actually, it reconfigured things again for me. I know it, that's what happened for me. And I was like, okay. Well, I know this isn't right. This I'm anxious overdoer wasn't right. So then I do, I connect and ground best in nature when we, when I slow things down for my family, when things get slower and there's more space. But there was a complete disconnect from like I said, the connection to everything higher and everything aligned from my birth to what unraveled after was like a downfall spiral to rebuild. Yeah. Um, and I know that's not uncommon for for mothers and would I be right to say for fathers? Yeah, but like I think it's like as you were speaking that is like that's like literally what I've witnessed so much with Shona. Because how you explain that is like you like you met yourself, you met your true self through yeah. tapping into that divine power of this powerful goddess, like birthing this human being into the world. And it's like, so your pendulum swung to like, this is where you know that you can be. And then you're like, but like, and that's a very hard polarity to hold. So then like we just threw the parenting and all of that stuff the pendulum swings back the other way and it's because you have witnessed that once you swing back the other way and you're like oh shit how do i get actually back to there but you're not mm-hmm. going to be you're not going to be living in that place 24 7 so it's a matter of you went back and that's where the challenge and the struggle of motherhood came into place and then that murkiness of coming back to find is like right who actually am i in this and like that's literally 
that has been shown his journey so much through each of her births. Like I've been witnessing and holding her through that so yeah. much. And like I'd say, like so many women experience that because it is like you're tapping into that raw power. You're seeing what your potential is. But then yeah. you're like, right, then you're how you are in the day to day. You feel like you probably feel like you're never doing enough. You're not living up to that potential. That, that yeah, old story much. comes into play. Yeah. And then that's where that polarity comes in. And that's where the struggle think- comes in. Then I think essentially a big part of mine, and I I would say having I, I run in the women's circles, I hear this a lot, is um the after giving birth and being trained people pleasers and good girls. Like how do we hold our you know our cubs? How do we protect our cubs without offending everybody? Mm. How do we do that and be very polite and very good? You know, yeah. and all those things that is, you know, put on. And this is what I want to speak to you about in terms of how is that for, for men? But like, how, you can't, you can't tiptoe around every belief, every opinion in society, stay true to ourselves, hold space for everyone's emotions in the house. And and still be a well person. Yeah. Unless you put in a lot of healing measures that um you know, you know, and, and I'm gonna spiral off here, but like even in, you know, you think pre-parent like Natty and Finn, right? Yeah. And I also was in Australia, you know, life was good, it was easy, there was no massive contrast other than visas to to widen our healing or growth we were living in like cruisyville yeah were we the best forms of ourselves no we weren't (laughs) did we care no we didn't you know but then you know so but then here we are with all this responsibility and then the demons then the darkness comes and there is a demand for growth Mm. and healing if and you know it's funny because you have the you have the relationship with yourself as a mother or a father then you have your relationship with your partner and then you have these people that are your world and they get you i i don't know I know, uh, yeah, I'd like to know your opinion on this, Ben. Why do you think that, you know, we come to that growth when we have them? Why has nature done that? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, and I, I think it is. It's such a beautiful question to look at. And it's to so many people that they go through life just that blissfully unaware. They're just like, mm-hmm. it's what we were like when we're you know, younger versions of ourselves are just blissfully unaware and just I'm in cruise control I'm just living yeah. my life and doing that but things happen in our life that cause us to look at things in a different different light and again as you said it's like parenthood can be such a big transformation for so many people because it actually gets you to start looking at yourself and you've got these little human beings that are going to be a mirror for all of your shit and if you're aware of it or if you're not, it's like they are here to teach you a lesson. They are here to help you evolve and grow. And the stuff that you avoid, the stuff that you push down, it's going to just keep being brought up. And again, this is something that I see so often with fathers. It's like it's going to keep being brought up and you can push it down. You can ignore it until the cows come home. But like you have to face it sometime sooner rather than later. Whereas unfortunately, a lot of people like they're just not willing to look at that side of it. And that's where we talk things down about all of the child development is talk things down about the parenting stuff. But mm. we avoid it. We numb ourselves out and we get caught up in the busyness of life. Whereas it's the people who are actually willing to actually look at it, take that pause, take that step back and actually really check in with themselves. It's like, right, something needs to change. I need to change here mm. because this, this, this isn't working anymore. I can't repeat, keep repeating the same cycles over and over again. And again, that's the hardest one. That's the hardest path to take. And by going down the route of conscious parenting or whatever fucking label you want to call it, going down this route of looking at life in this way through this lens, it is so fucking challenging. 
but again, it's so worth it. Mm. It's it, then like it is so hard. It is so hard. These, you know, forget every every aspect of the outside world. We know we want better and we deserve better and our children deserve us to be in our state of um, nurture and openness. But am am I massive, like, uh, and I'll get into that soon, but I'm massive on love and compassion, but that is near impossible to stay tapped into when no one has taught you the tools of like uh, managing being burnt out because you we, who said to us then in when we were birthing our kids and our here do you know what it's really really important to look after yourselves and you know get into nature and no one give us so it's hard when I'm doing it now that I'm sort of awakening to my requirements and needs that need met in order for me to show up as a sane mommy like as, mm. as a mommy with like a balance in herself even then it's so hard so like a ma- like i know what it's like to have not even showered enough and to not even know how to be like like how do i ask for a shower how, yeah. do i have to ask for a shower you know what i mean and then and then uh, we, when we first had my first, we le- we went back to my mom and dad's house. We'd come back from Australia. We were trying to find a house. And like, my mom was so delighted that I got a shower. She'd be like, did you have a good shower, Nadia? And I sort of felt like, yes, thanks. I had to kind of be like, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, for my bare, basic kind of hygiene that I needed. And all of that is a stark contrast to the Nadia that used to spend three hours at the mirror trying a new makeup style act. Mm. You know, it's a real brutal contrast. And it's like, it's it's regrowth after that. And yeah. then the biggest thing for me was, and I think if a lot of people were to be honest, my relationship took a battering. Like, an absolute battering because all frustration I had internally was my husband not showing up for me. Mm. When the reality of it was, I like I wasn't showing up for me, but I didn't even know how to do that. Did I need to? How? Why do I need to do that? You know. So my marriage took an absolute beating. Our our health individually, male and, you know, mom and dad, me and him, took an absolute downhill, resentful, bitter. Like, I really wanted him there because I really desperately wanted any help. But every time he was there, it was just like, well, you're meeting none of my needs. He was in survival. I was in survival. It just was hell. Mm. Uh, and we had no awareness of how to get out of it. Yeah. Like, and like what you have just described is, I would say most parents have gone through some stage of that to some extent of that, but a lot of them don't want to admit it. Mm. Like, and I know from myself and Shona, like, it's like we've been through some so much of that challenge, so much of that tough times. But it's one of them things. It's like we're so lucky. We're so blessed that both of us are on this path of like questioning things and awareness and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So we're able to come back to each other a lot quicker and we're able to support each other and figure stuff out a lot, a lot easier because it is something that we are actively trying to do for ourselves and for the relationship. But there's definitely like there's been periods where like there's been so much of that just you're just you're just basically passing ships in the night like there's like you don't have that time to connect you don't have like all of that time like you're just roommates basically who are just looking after everything but one of the things that was coming up when you were speaking about that when your husband like you felt like he wasn't able to help you meet your needs curiously did you know what your needs were even yourself no no and you know what 
even like on reflection, and it's literally been this past month that I've thought, do you know, I was really unwell. Actually, I was really, and if you'd have asked three years ago, Nadia, to admit that, mm. there was no chance. Yeah. I, and this is the downfall that I think a lot of women face now. We are wounded masculine up yep. to the eyeballs as females uh, because being feminine isn't valued mm. in our society, right? Yep. So, and I came from a really loving home. My mum's a West Belfast mummy and my dad is a Middle Eastern man from Iraq, right? Yep. So I grew up in a house that my sensitivities, my super duper passion about everything was entirely too much. And what was valued was getting stuff done. You know, this 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 uh, almost like a uh, hustle mentality. Um but but al- alongside, you know, come on, Nadia, we need you to be a bit more like uh, like wounded masculine and maybe maybe uh, just imbalanced into the into the heel masculine, you know, mm. um, was the devaluation of me simply because and this wasn't a conscious anything. This is society. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not enough. You know, it, it's that it's that whole thing. Like, how do we show up as women in our softness when nothing feels safe then? Yeah, yeah. So, so we can't be soft enough to tap into what does nurturing Nadia need? What does my true feminine, soft, supple uh responsive intuitive self need she was gone she was i even my you know <laughs> even my husband's fun like i know out of wanting to be heard a lot of times in my life i i can be really aggressive mm. yeah and to me i'm just being passionate but to my husband i'm 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 scary. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm curious to kind of see from like your perspective of this, from a woman's perspective of this, like you don't feel safe enough to drop into your feminine. But like, do you feel like from the masculine perspective, is that because men are too in their masculine? Men are in their wounded masculine too much? Or they just don't have a, an awareness of any of it? think, uh, well, it depends who you're speaking about, really, you know, uh, but. I think there's a lot of we women. Uh, I am, and I see a lot of the girls that come to my circle really finding it hard to not show up in like approving ourselves, mm. proving our justifying our presence on this earth. I can so we go into the I can do it all, I can do every single thing, and in fact. Alex is my husband, you know, I absolutely give him no space to take. Because sure, why would I give him the child when I know she's going to settle quicker for me? In fact, Alex, do you know what? Honestly, at times, I felt he was a hindrance. Mm. And how how does he show up for me when that's the energy he's getting? Yeah. Like we we were to, well, one of the circles, I think about a month ago, three of the girls had said, you know, they'd come, they'd created space for themselves, but they left the jammies out on for the men, right? Because admittedly, they said, well, we like the matching. We like matching jammies on our kids and they won't do that. Yeah. yeah. And like they knew themselves, they knew that they, we, and, you know, we discussed it. Like it's, it's, a we, when we're in a, when obviously I'm in a man, female relationship, there's one thing me being like, where are you? Where are you? Where are you at, Alex? But Mm. I literally, first of all, my anxiety was through the roof. 
I had to control everything. Yeah. And that, like, that was out of survival. You know, I love him dearly, but, uh, and, and there was an element of a lot of what happens after a baby's born, although intuitive and instinctive in a, in a female, we don't actually know. It, it just, a, a lot of things uh, are very, very difficult. Like breastfeeding is natural, but it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Do you know what I mean? But we come equipped with all these things. And it came up the other night in the circle that it felt like we didn't get a handbook, right? But then we we have to spend, the frustration lies with when we have to explain. Mm. Actually, Alex, she's doing that because da 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 so, so, and I said to Alex when I got home, I said, do you know, I think going into parenthood, thinking like this was a, a thought that I had created based on society saying, how beautiful you are both having this baby. I thought it was going to be 50-50. I thought literally like, I know I had to, I had to give birth. Yeah. And I, I knew I wanted to breastfeed, but I thought everything else. But there was a resentfulness there because if Alex, Alex was going to work, obviously, and that, and and I couldn't. Yeah. I lost all outside kind of adult contact and my ho- I, f- I felt really left behind yeah. by him mm. because of my perception of what us both having a baby together would look like. Yeah. That's huge. That, from your point it's of huge, view. It's huge seeing that. And like, I'd love to know, it was like from... Like I kind of look at it from the father's point of view, from the from that provider side of things. Like, how did Alex feel in the mix of that? Was he blissfully unaware of this, or was he, I'm going out to be the provider, so then you can be there to be the nurturer, or what was that like? Well, then being if he if he had, if he had said that to me, you know, and I and like I'm openly healing from being aggressive because I don't feel hard. That was my that was the pattern, right? Yeah. He knew that that was, so he he went silent. Mm. I'm actually really sad thinking about it now because you know I know that both of us were doing our absolute best. Yeah. And definitely in reflection. Uh, I can see how I didn't give him a chance, but like it was, I was in survival mode. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad, and we're not given, you know. And I hear it. Like I have a few moms in in one of the circle groups at the minute, and the resentment is huge. And I see it from their point of view. I really, really do, Finn. But that's where we do need we do need our women circles. We do need our women, and our men need that. And I and I I I've been bashed for this before. I really believe there's a different energy when it's well. I've never been in a just men circle or a just men environment, but I really believe the energy is different when it's just one sex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that is not to say people are like, you hate men. I was like, I really don't. But I think um, when we have that space within our own set, um, then we can, I don't believe that we should get everything we need from our one husband. Mm-hmm. I think we need our women and men need their men. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. And I think that's such a big thing. It's like, and that's again, where society has changed over time is where it's like there's so much pressure on your partner in a relationship that we go to them for everything. Whereas yeah. like it's not meant to be like that. Yeah. Like we are meant to have like and you look back at all of the traditions, all the tribes, all of that stuff, there was so much of partners come together, but then there is the women's circle, there is the men's space. There is that connection where you go to your elders, you go to the different people for all of that. Whereas we don't have that anymore. And no. again, it's for yourself seeing as like Yes, I think it's so vital for like all mothers to be able to come together in a safe space, to be able to have that support there 
with other mothers where they can be seen, they can be heard, and they can be held through what they're going through. But yeah. men need to seek that as well. Whereas, unfortunately, so many men's way of seeking that is going down to the pub or yeah. playing footy or like just having superficial conversations around just bullshit of what's happening. And they like they don't want to go to that point of actually having connection. They don't want to go to that point of sharing the vulnerabilities, sharing the stuff. And again, it's like what Alex experienced. Like he just went inwards. He went silent. He withdrew. Yeah. And I know from myself, like that is a go. That's a pattern that would be in me as well that I've been working very consciously on over the years to break away from because that's all I've known because for me I feel so much of that has been pushed down for men as like you can't show signs of weakness you can't so, show signs of vulnerability you just need to toughen up and get on of it there's so much of this subconscious conditioning in men that makes us that is bred into us to actually hold it all together but again there's no, no wonder why suicide rates are through the roof there's no wonder why mental health issues are through the roof because we're still not taking that step to change. We're still not taking that step to reach out and ask for that support and help. It's, it's desperate, Finn, because if you think, right, you think that, I mean, if Alex had somewhere to go to be like, to get a wider perspective, and that's not to say there aren't people closest, but like you said, I mean, uh, I think he listened to a podcast recently about truly wonderful male role models and mm. the importance of that when growing up. Now, the reality of it is both male and female generations up the line, you know, we're coming in. I think there is a big, there's going to be, the world is evolving now. You know, we have access. I think there is a big healing kind of revolution coming. I really, really feel it. But you know, where do we go to? Who yeah. who are those guys? And where? Not even that. You know, I hear time and time again when people come to the circle saying, I've never been in a safe space like this. Mm. Yeah. To be able to share. Yeah. You know, because how much is, and I don't know, it, mm, is I'm thinking Australia versus Ireland, you know, what 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 are the differences there? But, you know, we come in, we lock our doors. This is my house. That's your house. You know, we're all, that sense of community isn't there. And yeah. even when it is, it can be a bit toxic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so so where do we go? Mm. To I... our men's and women's circles, Ben, that is where we go to. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's why we do what we do, because we yeah. have... Like I know for myself is like I do this work because this is what I needed myself back six years ago when I was going through the shit because I didn't see people around doing this. And I was in mine for so long because I didn't see any other way. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. suffered in silence for so long. I wore the masks of, yeah, I'm OK. I can push through. Everything's OK. I'd done that for so long until a point until I couldn't any longer because I mm -hmm. didn't know any different. And it wasn't until I got to that breaking point that it's like, right, shit needs to change. I need to change. What can I do? And that's when I started to look and to see that there was sort of things available. There was see that there was stuff that I could do. And th that was what started me massively on my own journey with it. And that's why I do what I do, because I don't want men to get to that point where they have to be through, go through the depths of yeah. the darkness to get to that breaking point. 100%. And Finn, did you start that in Australia? Yeah. Yeah. And do you, could you, could I ask, could I ask what the differences were? That's one of the biggest questions that I get asked so often is like, so many people is like, coming back to Ireland after being in Australia for 12 years, it's just easier to do this sort of work over there. It's like, I think that's a cop out. Mm. Like whenever it started back in Perth, it was it was seen as being such a foreign thing. But like How long that ago was that that six was years. like six, but six seven years ago was whenever mm -hmm. I started. Like I'd been doing like lots of different aspects of personal development, but more to kind of like the spiritual woo woo stuff. But I never actually stepped into the men's work, like the stepping into like looking at my shadows, looking at the, all of that sort of stuff, because again that wasn't really available. And whenever I started doing that, it was very much at the forefront of those the first ones that were available in Perth. Like I was got really right. good friends with the men who were starting to lead that. And I was part of that kind of starting phase of what was starting there. It was seen as so foreign and so different there. And there was not a lot of people were doing it. 
and that's where Ireland I feel is has been now in the last year or so it's like it's happening it's starting there's people doing it but now I look over in Perth and it's like there's like Every weekend, like you could go to like ten different fucking breathwork sessions, ten different men's circles and the okay. beaches and all of like it's so like every man and the dog is doing it. There's so much more available there, but there's mm -hmm. still a lot of people who are closed off not doing it. But mm -hmm. that's been a journey. Whereas over here, like I can see it's starting, it's happening, but it's just taking time for it to build up. Mm. It's it creating, I think it's creating safety around it because it's so unknown. Yeah. You know, like, um, I can't imagine how much more difficult it is for men. Is it? I Ta think it's the same. I can feel like it's the same for both. Like, it's like the, so much of it is, like, as you said, is that creating safety? Like, but mm -hmm. so much of it is like when you haven't been around that, it's really foreign for anyone. And I think that's one of the things, like, like, if you look at so many relationships, if you look at so much friendships and stuff like that over the years, or when we were younger, things were growing up, it's like, there's always that element of the bitchiness. There's always that element of the, the lads banter and all of that. And like the piss taking and all of that stuff was there. Like, and then you wouldn't have a deep conversation unless it was like four o'clock in the morning after a big night out and you're pissed around. That's oh. when you actually, all the hearts open up. That's where you'd have the big conversations and all of that stuff, because that was all, that was when, the mask was off and you felt safe enough to be able to have them conversations and then you'd have the dread the next day. It was like, fuck, what was I saying? Whereas uh, being able to do that in a sober environment, in a different environment is, is fucking challenging. If you have mm -hmm. not been around that, if you have not been shown that and experienced that before, but it's so many people are seeking that now more than ever. So many people are seeking that deeper connection now more than ever. Yeah. But, it I, is like it's a big leap of faith to step into it like and yeah it is I don't know like it's funny um what do I think around that I think oh I suppose my assumption is that it's you know women come and they still have that oh what are we going into and that but are we not naturally a bit better at sharing women, women? Yeah. yeah yeah so how how so how does a man, how does a men's circle work? What do you do? So for myself, like what I have found on experience over the years for myself is like men, men learn by doing. It's like whereas women come together, in, it's, by, it's not just like there's a very simplistic aspect of it. It's like men, women come together and as soon as you come together and like you open a space, you create that, that safety and that sanctuary in that space, mm -hmm. like it's naturally got to allow them to open up and start start doing whatever they need from that space when it's facilitated from someone who's really good at holding that whereas men coming into that the guards are going to be up for a lot longer okay. whereas men need to do stuff to be able to break down the barriers and for me because i come from a health and wellness background a fitness background that's where i attach stuff back to health and fitness more so as like so it could be coming together and like let's do a workout to break down the barriers have a bit of banter but then in my exercise in my workouts this is where i bring in things that are different like when we moved on to we were living in perth for nine years when we moved on to denmark which is like five hours south of perth like it's beautiful little town little community but there was nothing like this down there so i was like i want this for myself because i need to have men around me that i feel held and feel supported with mm -hmm. but i want to be able to start something here but i knew if i was like oh men's circle come and do breath work in a sharing circle no one's going to come so what i know is like let's meet at eight o'clock in the morning at the beach and have a workout and mm -hmm. and do some breath work people will come to that and so I that's what I started and like I ran that for about a year or so and like we had so many amazing men came through to that every week where we come together we do like half an hour of a movement session but in that movement session I would bring in a lot of games to get us moving and have a lot of close body contact and a bit of grappling and wrestling and different stuff like that as well to yeah. start breaking down the walls to start building that connection building that trust but then after the workout we would have a sharing circle where like I just open up the space and just like let's have a check in of where people are at and then that's where we'd have a bit more of a sharing circle talking about stuff and then we'd finish off with some breath work and jump into the into the ocean after it. Amazing. Amazing. That, some people would come and like yeah let's go we'll go down Sunday morning work workout and other people is like oh yeah, we go for we go for the actual this sharing circle and the breath work and the the workout as a bonus so it's giving them a little bit of what they want, but then sandwiching that in with what they actually need. Brilliant, Finn. 
And that I feel is like brilliant. it's one of the things that I love. Like, there's a, I've got a few mates around Ireland and stuff to do stuff around. Like, the, it'll base a lot of stuff around nature. So it was like mm -hmm. getting in out of nature. It was like give a fucking axe in your hand and start chopping wood and making a fire. And while doing that, having a conversation and that's opening up. That's where they're doing stuff and they're starting to build that connection to feel a bit of sense of safety. And then that's a way to start opening things up more so with it. Whereas if you invited them in, it was like, right, let's sit in a room and just sit around looking at each other straight yeah. away. It's the walls are going to be up yeah yeah okay okay um see the cutting wood thing right and it, uh, and i want to bring this to you from a uh, things that i just didn't know about men right it's be a series <laughs> things i didn't know about men <laughs> um so my husband is from new zealand yeah. right and we can go to our service stations and buy kindling and logs yeah yeah no, 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 no. Alex, why would I do that when I could go and buy an axe? Like he'd like, and for, like, I, I laughed at him. I was like, you're like, what is the point? It's three bag, three pound for a bag. And he's on his healing journey and I'm on mine. And I, and I, it's in a really like, we're both in transition, but it was only one day when he was like, you know, the healing properties. Yeah. of him like I never I never especially from being from like Ported Iron and you know everything's like convenience 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 and him walking across the window with an axe and I like of course the feminine said me loved it also mm -hmm. Finn like I thought he's cool but absolutely I was like there is no need for that but when he then one day explained to me what he got from that yeah you mm -hmm. know I was like that makes perfect sense that makes and you know in terms of learning I'm literally just learning about my husband now and we have been together for 17 years yeah. you know uh and it's because I'm open to mm -hmm. things so I'll tell you something that happened and I want I would love your take on why this was different and I know you're Alex Alex and you're Finn but so when Alex gets stressed, right, for all my life, I thought my job was to be his cheerleader. I thought my job was to help fix it. I thought like all these preconceptions of what I was meant meant to do as his partner, right? And recently, about three months ago, he was going through something with his business. And I was getting frustrated with him because like when he goes into his like, when he's having to dig deep, he gets silent. I'm an anxious attachment, recovering. Yeah. Yeah. And he's an avoidant. <laughs> and uh, I was like, knew that this pattern was going to happen again. I was frustrated with him and needed help, you know, where, and I was talking to a friend of mine and she said, Nadia, like, you know, what do, what, what do you think you need to do? And I was like, well, I don't know what, like, what could I do to help him? Right, I'm going to, Right, what I'll do is I'll tidy the house, you know, trying to, and then he'd like not see it because he was in his in his blinkered zone and I'd be frustrated. And I was like, well, that's it. She says, have you ever just said to him that you just trust him to get it sorted? And I was like, no, <laughs> no, I haven't. And she was like, well, do you trust him? And like it was the first time I'd really taken into account how how good of a problem solver Alex is. Mm. Like I actually do trust him to get whatever it is sorted. And he came home and he was in his shutdown mode. You know, he was processing a lot. He's a processor, I'm not. <laughs> and I went up to him and I said, "You know, Alex, I see you're struggling. I see, I see this is really big for you." But can I just tell you, I really trust you. I really trust you to get this sorted because you're really good at this. Mm. And I just let it go. I didn't go into hyper cleaning mode. I didn't try to do more for him, you know. Uh, and then I sort of give him space as well, yeah. which is not a natural thing for me to do. And it was a whole different way of being. Yeah. And he appreciated it. But can I, like, from your point of view, what I know his process, but like, what's your process on that being somebody that supports men in their well being? 
like I think it's like such a big thing is like it's having awareness of why we do what we do and it's like the more we as like anyone but I guess one of the big things that I want to teach and empower men to do is like understand why you do what you do understand what your patterns are so then you can see what is happening why you're doing certain things where things start playing up and how you can support yourself with that so again as you said it's like you know that you're an anxious attachment you know he's avoidant attachment that's so important for you to know and understand that so you can actually start seeing things play out naturally how they want to play out but then you know how you can actually support them to play out in a different way so again, mm -hmm. with that, it's like it's like that's very similar to myself and Sean. I'd be more avoidance. Should she be very much anxious attachment? Whereas, like, why do we it, attract each other? Like, why? That, that's, <laughs> it's like that's such a beauty. Like it's that's such a big thing. It's like where all you want is that connection to be that help to be that support for him because that's where you feel safe and secure within that. Whereas he probably feels super claustrophobic in that time, and then mm, like that's causing the conflict. That's causing the issues to arise with it. But by you actually being able to like look at it and really check in yourself and like put your stuff to the side and say it's like right I trust you like that would have been so hard for you to do but so healing for you to do to kind of yeah. lose some of that anxious attachment to him yeah. but then not give him permission to do what he needed to do yeah yeah and I feel like that's one of the things as men it's like to understand ourselves understand why we do what we do but then question them patterns like mm. what can we do to crack like because so many guys is like oh like i'm just that avoidance i just need to go in silence i just need a process but it's like are you just sitting in the shit for longer than you need because you're not actually willing to change or can you challenge them can you start looking at ways to break through some of them patterns sooner rather than later to start creating the change yeah yeah i mean i also like i mean i was looking up stuff for you know i was thinking a lot about what we were going to speak about and I seen something on Instagram saying that, you know, there is a narrative that women are crazy because of our monthly cycles, right? Yeah. So, and this guy was saying, I was actually afraid of my wife's emotions. Like I mm. was afraid of upsetting her, of, yeah. of her feeling anger, of her feeling sadness, of her. And it was when he became accustomed to the fact that you know, we 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 you know we 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 are human. We do all that, um, that he found it a lot easier to process. Yeah. Uh, and I was wondering, you know, are I wonder if I wonder if more men are avoidant. Mm. I wonder. I would love to know. Uh, and then you know, there's a lot about. Recently, I also have been really, really coming into the consciousness of, you know, that narrative being around females of, you know, she's due a period, you know, avoid her, you know, and all that eye rolling behavior because we just seem off the scale. Yeah. And there's no rate, especially not in like our culture, I would say, or probably most cultures, there was no respect around yeah. any of that. Yeah. So, you know, the narrative within a home to the boys was like, oh, avoid her. Oh, she's yeah. she's she's mental. You know, all that. And it's give her just some chocolate so and give her space. <laughs> give her chocolate and space. And uh, she's gone off on one. Oh, but just let that one go. She doesn't really mean that. And all this here. But yeah. there's just a, you know, and if we think about that conversation and energy from the get go between, between like I have a son and a daughter mm. between from that very get go of that disrespect of the yeah. fact that we are different and instead of becoming accustomed and honoring each other in our differences yeah. we are we we both like w women are you know dare anybody know that we're on our period yeah. in an yeah. office yeah. you know and and all that so i wonder and then and then we're fired into these relationships and then we get married cuz that's what you do yeah and then <laughs> and then all of a sudden we're like, you know, shit hits the fan with kids and pressure. And like, no wonder then. Yeah. Then, you know, we are in absolute survival modes. Yeah. Yeah. Like 100%. Like there's so much you can speak into with that. But I think one of the big things, how I look at that side of it, it's like, it's, I believe as men, 
to be able to bring fully yourself to the table in a relationship and to be able to create that like harmonious relationship with your partner is like for a man is like you need to put your shit aside and actually learn and understand and respect the cycle and for women for a lot of women as well you probably need to actually educate yourself a little bit more on it as well because there's so many women that i know that have worked with over the years that they are so blissfully unaware of what actually is going on and how best to support themselves through the cycle. Whereas like if both of you can come together with education and understand where you are, what's going on and how to support yourself with that, like it's going to make so much life so much easier. And I guess one of the things it's like, like as I've been kind of learning more and more about that over the years for Shona, it's like, like we've got four kids now. It's like, she it's like, she never had her, like whenever whenever between pregnancies like she would go like about 18 months before she'd have her get her period right, back okay. so then you'd, she'd only have a few cycles again and then like that's when we were pregnant again and yeah. um, so but in that time like she was wanting to learn more about that because growing up in ireland it was so much as like you don't talk about it you're shaming it you push it down so she was like i need to get in tune with my body so she started using the spinning wheels app but then I got, I downloaded her, the Spin of Wheels app on my phone as well. And mine, so I could see her app on my phone. So mm-hmm. I could see war, where she was in her cycle. Yeah. I understand the cycle more as well. So when depending on where she is at each phase, I know what I can do to support her with that to make that easier. Rather than being like, oh, stay away. She's all just blaming it on it. As a, mm-hmm. as a man, is like, you need to actually step up and take a bit of responsibility and what you could do to lighten the load on your partner a bit and support them as well. But so much of this comes through education and taking action. And I feel for me, that's what like being a leader for your family is for, for men. It's like you need to do some of the uncomfortable things for yourself. It's like if you're not sure about something is like find resources is going to help you understand it. So then you can support your partner in that. And it's going to make life so much easier with for everyone included. And then that's what you've got to trickle down into your kids. And it's going to start changing that that relationship in the next generation as well. What thing has you open to all of this? Um, why you? Why you? You know, you were brought up here. Um, the majority of women that come to my circles, you know, I have spoke a lot about you, Finn. I think what you're doing needs to happen. This, this, and I know there's other there's other guys out there doing brilliant work, and a lot of women said, "Oh, he'd never go. Yeah. He'd never go." So what do you have? Can you see a consistency or a rule of thumb of the type of men that come to you? Is that fair to ask? Oh, if I knew that answer, like I'd say, <laughs> you'd say things would be very different. Like if I was able to like crack that code to be able to reach more men, like things would be very different. Like, and it's one of the, this is like, this is a conversation that I have with a lot of other guys, like men who are leaders in this field in Ireland as well. It's like, I've been lucky enough to like constantly connect with a lot of the masculine leaders in dotted all over Ireland. And this is a conversation that we're constantly having like, why is more men not coming to this stuff? Mm-hmm. It's like, they're asking for these things. Then we put on an event and then you get crickets. And yeah. they're like, you are asking for this fucking stuff, but you're not showing up. Mm-hmm. and I guess one of the biggest things for a C for guys like I've put out polls and stuff like that through my social media and I was like I put out a poll a few, a few months like six months back and uh, asking is like women what they wanted and men what they needed and it's like the women was like so many women was like they want their husbands they want the partners to be able to do this work but when it came to the men's side of it and what they're answering is like they don't see it as a priority right right okay what do men see as a priority then I feel so much of that is still stuck in that old idea of provider. And like uh-huh. that, that's like you look at like your you we look back at our parents' generation. But then yeah. you look at like what's how society is now as well. It's like you need to have the fucking ridiculously big house. You need to have the two fancy cars. You um, need to have be everyone decked out with all the technology, all of the stuff. There's so much pressure to basically fucking show up with the Joneses, like put like so put so much pressure of seeking that validation through all of the external bullshit rather than actually looking at what's going on underneath and i feel like that's like that has been one of the big eye-opening things for myself and shona since coming back from australia Mm -hmm. is like to see is like how superficial so many things are here in ireland and so how superficial Mm -hmm. so many people are and like the value base like what people's value systems are and where their value system lies is that's been 
probably the most jarring for us to be able to mm-hmm. sit, sit with and to kind of see. They were like, fuck, like not a bit of wonder everyone's so stressed to their eyeballs because their value systems is so much on the external about what people think, what people mm-hmm. see, rather than actually what's going on underneath. Yeah, I think I think I could say the exact same about. I just think that I actually recently had a chat with Alex about this. He has his own business and works full time, and and you know I said, you know I know there's there's something about men and work that's very important. Now that's not to say that you know we as women in our generation we all work too. That's yeah. fine. However, there's something there. And I asked him, you know, is your value in your pay package? Mm. Is your value as a as a person? And I think those lines were crossed. Mm. I think it is, and I do now. I do think women are absolutely getting there as well. Like what you decide to pay me equals my worth. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what is it? And I, I understand the provider thing. But is there a healthy aspect to that as well, Finn? Is that a weird question? Do you know what I mean? Is mm. there a way, say say you were doing all the work and then you were successful in terms of, say you did make millions. Mm. Is there a way that that doesn't feed into the ego for men? I feel a big thing of that is... Um... The question I would love every man to explore for themselves is mm-hmm. what is success to you? What does mm-hmm. successful, what does a successful life look like for you? Because again, it's like so much of us are working towards that success of the business, the finances, the other stuff. But then when you actually boil it down, when you like talk to like some of the most successful business owners and all of that stuff, you look at their actual personal life and it's a fucking shams. Yeah. And like so many of them like get to that point where it was like, oh, like I've been so successful in all of these areas of my life, but it's like I'd change it all for for mm-hmm. health, for the relationship, for mm-hmm. the relationship with my kid. Like it's like so like I feel that is where we need to start looking at is like creating what creating your definition of success for yourself, mm-hmm. what that looks like, true business, true family, true friendships, true health, true relationships. Like yeah. what is that idea, what does that definition of success look like for you? And mm-hmm. then that's what you want to be working towards. Whereas most people are working towards someone else's idea of success without yeah. looking at the other stuff. And that's why you feel like, just as I'm speaking this, I've never actually put words to this, but that's why so many people have so much inner conflict because they're working to this idea of what success is, but it doesn't feel right in their bodies mm-hmm. because they're being away from their family more, because their health is suffering more, but they still have to be working towards this idea of what success is so that could be the matter is like right do i actually need to have like that in the bank and all of the fancy gadgets in the car and all of that stuff to the detriment of my health and my relationships or Mm -hmm. is it the matter is like maybe it's like i can put some boundaries in place with the work side of things so then i can actually do a little bit more of the balance through here and i feel like until guys start looking at life in that perspective until people start asking themselves the hard questions in that way it's going to just keep going down that path okay. and then it gets to that point of desperation where it's like something has to change because your health suffers, your relationship suffers or whatever that might be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I'm wondering, you know, uh, then uh, what would be your answer to this? So you're not like, say, you know, Finn at the start of parenthood, and Nadia started parenthood you know I know how I didn't cope with that very well what way from a man's point of view could I have addressed that better say say I was very very capable and the anxiety wasn't running me what what would have been helpful you know say there's a woman out there she's a young baby her husband's turned off Hmm. What way, is there a way that we could check in in a way that didn't emasculate or put more pressure? Alex said he felt like mm. when I kept saying to him, I'm, I like, I just want to be connected with you. Yeah. He, like, I didn't know this. To me, that is the most beautiful thing someone could say to me. 
I yeah. want to be connected. For him, it was something else he wasn't doing right. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I was going to say with that. It's like, it's so much, it comes down to the communication. Whereas like for the mother, if you're coming out from that burnt out perspective and you're like, oh, I just want that connection. I just want us to be able to be here. But then the father side of things, he's probably just saying, it's like, I'm never doing enough. No mm-hmm. matter what I do is not enough. So then it's going to come as an attack as well. And that's like both wounded people t- fucking just showing out, playing out their wounds and then just pushing each other further away. So sometimes it's a matter of actually, it's like looking, it's like, I think this is where like, it is really hard for people. It's like, how do you get to that conversation, but in a healthier way? And it's nearly like, it's like, I'm very much on like the language that we use and like more of that conscious communication. And it's like, and what's some of the things that we can bring in? So it's like for the fella, he needs to take responsibility of himself. For the mother, she needs to take responsibility of herself in certain aspects. So then when you come together, you are coming together without triggering each other so much. Yeah. So that's like, and that's a hard fucking thing to learn. That's hard such thing. a hard thing to learn because again, in the that, thick of it all, it could, in your thick of it, that puts so much, another thing that you're not doing enough of, you're not doing right. Mm-hmm. You have to put more pressure on. And again, it's one of them things that's like, if we, if I knew all the answers to this, like things would be very different. Like this is a continuous conversation that myself yeah. and Shona have. Yeah. Like, yeah. and it's that continuous reminder of what, what we have. And like, I know for myself, like where I am now in like Ku is <clears throat> he's gonna be he's gonna be three months old next oh. next week. And wow. like so that's the that's our fourth child. That's my fourth round of going through this chaotic mm-hmm. time of newborn, all of that sort of stuff. And like hands down, this is the best I have been looking okay. after myself in it because I have been very fucking proactive in what I'm doing because I've learned the hard way before. Mm-hmm. Whereas like with Shona, she's like still going through that mix of fucking everything with that that yeah. where it gets like i feel like for the woman is like there's so much all our pressures that are put on because as you said it's not 50 50 dynamic it's like you go through the whole process of carrying the baby of birthing the baby of breastfeeding if you're breastfeeding of all of the plethora of million all of thoughts that are going through your head every single day about the baby as well as about oh it's coming up to summer do I need to change the wardrobe do I need, like does everyone have clothes for the next day do like all of these millions of different things that are going through your head that the fella doesn't even enter their their consciousness mm-hmm. so it's but it's looking as like how can we boil it down to what's the smallest simplest little things that we can do for ourselves mm-hmm. in that to help us manage that yeah and then what do you think in what for you having looking in to yourself um managing yourself you yeah. know and taking care of yourself how has that allowed you to show up differently this time so again for myself is like i've become astutely aware of like of asking myself the question of why i do what i do so it's mm-hmm. like it's it's like looking it's like what are my patterns of self-sabotage so my mm-hmm. patterns of self-sabotage is like my deepest thing is when like from all of the fucking plethora of work I've done for myself is like I now like when I strip everything back it's like my deepest belief was is like I'm not good enough to deserve the love that I want and mm-hmm. so I do everything within my power to overcompensate for okay. that to so it's like to validate the, that need and not want that desire for love so that's where like people please are really fucking strong that's where like boundaries are non-existent that's where i will do everything for everybody else seeking mm-hmm. that validation and that acceptance and that love but i put myself down way that last down the peck in order but then when i do that i will get to a point where i'll just completely burn out and crash and burn and then i'm no good for anybody so like i know so fucking clearly that is so many of my patterns and how that plays out Mm-hmm. so that's where i've had to be really aware of that and looking is like right how does that actually play out in my day-to-day stuff what is the things that i do to avoid looking at myself looking at my emotions looking at the shit that's boiling up for myself and what's the things that i have in my medicine pouch to support me on a day-to-day basis so yeah. again like such a big pillar for me is my physical health is like if mm-hmm. i'm not fi- if i'm not doing something for my physical body like my mental fucking wellness goes oh. is is absolutely shit but that's the first thing that goes for me when life gets busy so that was yeah. why i decided back in like july last year is like i need to actually look at what it is that i'm doing i need to set some non-negotiables for myself and create a code is like what is it that i'm doing and what is it that i'm living by and the two main things on that is 
move my body every single day and journaling. It's like putting mm-hmm. thoughts on the paper every single day. And that is a thing, no matter what, I have done that every single day. Like I'm up to like, oh, I can't even remember. It's like up to like day 200 and wow. something now where wow. I've done that. And like, there's been so many times where like, the last thing I fucking want to do, it's 10 o'clock at night. Everyone's gone down to bed. I've been up for an hour cleaning the house and putting on the dishes, doing all the clothes, doing everything. And like the last thing I want to do is exercise. But I was like, I know that I need to do that for myself because that's going to, one be a sense of, of accomplishment doing what i say i want to do but two yeah. i'm moving my body and i'm going to feel so much better for doing so yeah and yeah yeah that's why like i that's why i'm doing that that's why i've made that choice and that decision for myself every day and then with my journaling that's where like i'm asking myself the questions i'm shining a light on what's going on for myself what went well today what didn't go well where did uh get triggered why did it get triggered in that way why did it react in that way and do a lot of inquisitive journaling and to figure out what i've done so then what i can we'll look at what i can do better the next day and them two things have been such a game changer because that has kept me so much more grounded in the fucking mm. chaos and the craziness of the last year four them four children it's mental and like it's like and like this has been like like it's not even just having four children it's like uprooting ourselves from australia to be fucking in ireland and then the whole fucking unraveling of that and the the challenge of that transition on all of us mentally and emotionally has been absolutely mammoth and then free birth and in the middle of that and all of the other fucking shit like there's been a lot on our plate for the last year but i know was like if i didn't do any of that stuff I would be in a fucking very different place mm-hmm. right now and my family would be in a very different place right now because I wouldn't have been able to hold them through that. What What would Shona say is the difference? What would she find different about you? Because you are totally, and like Finn, like I just want to at presence, you know, how much you have shown up for yourself. Mm. Like that is unreal. Like I, I feel like celebrating you because it's, it's really lovely to hear a man say those things, like understanding his worth now. And you're almost like rewriting what you know about yourself. Oh, Do you know it. Like it is literally that... like it is continuously like reprogramming it because I still look at it and I still feel like it's like, like I'm not I'm not doing enough is still like that's that narrative is still there. Mm. But this is why I'm really aware of doing this because I need to be, I'm doing this to collect as much evidence to rewrite that new story that I'm bringing into play. Yeah. Like it is literally reprogramming so much of yeah. that subconscious by doing so, but like still like that narrative, that old awareness, that old thoughts, them old beliefs are still present. They're still oh. loud where you're not doing enough, but it's like actually I'm fucking doing a lot with what I have right now. Yeah. And like it's, and it might be perfect, but it's yeah. fucking a lot better than where it would have been a couple of years ago. How old are you Finn? 37 yeah 37, 37. so I like, uh it's a lot that's 37 years or well that's 35 years or whatever yeah or when it, you know of reprogramming yeah and I suppose do you think those narratives and I know we can build up a lot of evidence of our growth and actually that's not me at all and do you think and I wonder what a 60, 70 year old would say or 80 year old would say this. Do you think they ever fully get quenched? I don't feel so. Like, it's like, I think it's like, it's so much in us. It's like, where's that? It's just that all is seeking for that next level of evolution, that next level of growth. Yeah. And like, there'll be times where definitely like things are plateaued, but like, I feel to a point as like, it's like a river, like a river never just stops. Does a river ever just stop? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really interesting hearing this from a man's perspective, and then, I don't, I, I don't think it's as different as I wanted it to be. I wanted yeah. it to be. Yeah, I wanted you to tell me all the secrets of what it is from a man's side, but a lot of it uh, across the whole well-being sector is not enoughness. Yeah, thing. like I feel like from working in this field for a long time and from helping a lot of people is like when you strip most of it back down, it comes back down to that core. Like you're not enough. Mm-hmm. Like seeking love for like that mm-hmm. fucking little child, that little mm-hmm. kid, that little girl, that little boy, just seeking love, seeking that, seeking that validation, seeking that love. As you said earlier, it's like so much of it just comes back to that love and compassion. Mm-hmm. And like it's not to say is like that, like I'm not like when I look back in all of this, I. I know all I wanted was 
to be received and to feel loved from mm. the parents, from the family, from all of that stuff. But I grew up in a very loving family, but I did not receive the love how I needed to receive it. Yeah. I received love in a very different way. That is like, it does, to be honest, like it doesn't really matter. Like it's like, you can get me shit. You can do all of that stuff. But unless you're holding me and like fucking like if I, unless I feel like really connected, really valued and actually like all of that is like, I don't feel it's enough. Mm hmm. Because it's like that's how I feel like I need to need to be held and received within that. Whereas like again, it's like you can get me all of the fancy shit and it's like I don't give about shit about that. Spend quality time with me, like fucking be hold me, have that deeper connection, have give me that time and space where you're looking in my fucking eyes. That's what I need for that validation. And but again, how is that? How is that awareness? I suppose that's the awareness where everyone that is open to this growth pattern is coming to. You yeah. know, we need validated, seen, heard, respected in our own receptive ways, yeah. in the way that we can can ingest that. Yeah. Um, how is that awareness brought into your fatherhood? How do you how how is that different? Do you think someone that's completely like never heard what you've just said before? to you how do you bring that into how you are as a dad like i think even before getting into that like the big thing is is looking at what i've been speaking into this is my journey like i've been doing this for a long time to figure to get to this point to figure this out and like i'll be the first to admit as like i don't have my fucking shit together mm -hmm. and it's still a fucking struggle every day like it's still a battle still you're still i'm still working on elements of it but i think it's for for anyone that's listening to this, for any guy that's kind of working on it, it's just if you start asking yourself questions, rather than just taking face value for what's going on in your life, that's going to be a first step for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, again, it's like start asking yourself the questions of why you're doing what you're doing. Like, mm -hmm. what, and like that's looking as like, what are some of the patterns that are playing out for yourself? Is it numbing out on social media? Is it reaching for alcohol? Is it, is it that avoidance of stuff going on? It's like, what is it that you're actually avoiding inside of yourself? Mm-hmm. And like by mm -hmm. looking at that, by shining that light in some of them uncomfortable areas for yourself, that's where you're going to start finding trends and start following them trends and start bringing them things in. Like it don't have to completely overhaul everything not all fucking straight in one go. It's there's lots of stuff that you can do, but to start pulling on them treads to understand some of the patterns, some of the things and why you do what you do. And then more so was like asking us like, what do I need in this moment to support myself in a different way? Like yeah. that's the one question I like a drill into every guy that I work with is like asking yourself when you get when you catch that awareness, when you catch the awareness, ask yourself the questions of like, why am I doing this? What is actually going on here? It's not the thing that I think it is, but what's actually going on through here? What is why am I playing out in this way? And then asking yourself the question, what do I need right now? Mm. And when you ask yourself, what do I need right now? Guaranteed is not what you think it is. It's not what you're doing. And it's like maybe it's like turn off Netflix and go to bed mm. or it's like maybe not have that other, that extra beer mm. maybe it's just going outside for a walk or like whatever that might be it's always going to be a small simple action but it's just going to be more in tune to you more in your truth and what your soul actually wants and needs and desires in that moment and then going that into like how do you can bring this into fatherhood again is like in the mayhem of fatherhood is like there's so much other stimulus going on there's so much other craziness going on but it's again coming back to how can you just kind of like just bring yourself back to yourself in mm -hmm. the moment to be able to hold these little people who fucking need you mm -hmm. because you're not going to do it perfect but it's no. coming back and doing the best is what you can with what you have then I think there's a really common misconception that people that run circles have their have their shit together <laughs> oh like it's seriously like it's so funny like i've worked with guys for fucking six 12 months and like i am continuously like, could have conversations with them one-on-one -on -one every week and then i would have group calls and stuff like that every week as well and like i'm like bringing all of my shit to the fucking table but then a few months down the line it's like oh, they'd say something was playing out for them it's like oh but should that wouldn't happen to you and you're like dude have you not been listening to me for the last four months I was like, don't hear. it happens all of us. <laughs> I was like, oh, but that wouldn't happen to you. I was like, yeah, it fucking does. I just catch it sooner. Sometimes. All the times it yeah. No, do you know, Finn, it's funny you say that. Uh, so prior to this conversation, literally like at 11 o'clock, we started this at 12. 
I think. Um, I went upstairs and Alex works uh, late into the night. So we got the kids off and he went back to bed. That's fine. And I went up to him and I was like, hey, Alex, see the laptop charger? I um, It's broken. Can you go to the shop and get me get me one, right? Now, normally, I'd be I'd just do it myself, right? But I was like, no, Nadia, lean into your feminine, you know, give him space to show up for you. And he woke up and he was like, Nadia, why didn't you? Why didn't you just go and get the charger? Like, you had all morning. And before I knew it, we're in a full, like, Oh, do I was like, don't worry, I'll do it, I'll do it. No, that's fine, I can, you're right. I armoured myself back up again, feeling sorry for myself, being like, I tried to give him space and he didn't show up for me and all this internally. And he was like, so we came downstairs and I was like, no, it's fine. Do you know what? And then I was like, no, hold on. Why did I do that? Why did I? Mm. And then I said, do you know what, Alex? I think I feel a wee bit anxious about doing this podcast. And I suppose I just wanted you to hold space for me and feel like you were supporting me in some way. And wow. I think that's why I asked you to get me the charger. And he was like, oh, yeah, okay. This is after like a full tip for tat. Yeah. And he said, like, I'll get you the charger. Yeah, I'll get you the charger. And that is worlds apart. Like, so mm. it still happens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I think that's like it's so important for people to hear that and understand that because like just that that awareness and that like why did I actually do that and then mm-hmm. I was like oh I'd done that because I was feeling really anxious about this and that was a way for you to to support me so I could just have a little bit of because like you're already feeling anxious and then you have to go to the shop and try to find us here and like you just would have been a ball of stress coming back because mm-hmm. I actually just want that bit of space whereas like that exchange that you had with Alex is fucking beautiful for people who are listening to see is like. Oh, this is it. This is that's what it actually looks like. Yeah, that's or, that's to me. That's healing. That's evolving. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not the the absolute absence of the 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 grittiness and the darkness. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's the evolving into. Yeah, it's the why. Why did why did I ask him to get me that charger? Mm, yeah. You know, and then my ego stepped in. Well, I'll do it myself. Yeah. I knew he couldn't do it. I asked him what, you know, and <clears throat> we're so in that, like my kids are five and seven now. Patterns have been formed mm-hmm. that aren't so beautiful, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I can see that ego that, you know, that little girl that was devalued. So she just went into hyper I'll do everything myself. Then I don't need a man was a massive part of my, of a lot of women's, because I see it in the circles. You know, we don't need men. Mm. <laughs> but I'll tell you something, Finn, and this is almost, if my 17 year old self heard me now, but like, it's really lovely for me and for other women. They've been, I'm, to be held and for a man in a male female relationship to be able to have have, you know i don't need him to have got my back but it's really lovely when he does and i'm actually really here for that Mm. yeah and that's a hard thing that's actually i can literally feel my body you know and i really evolved in in that in that notion because man, then I was armored up like culturally, my dad is lovely, but like he's from Iraq. You know, yeah. the culture is different, beautiful in some respects, and actually really respectful of women in some respects. Mm. But there's still that, um, and we are different, and I'm not here to say that we're equal and we're the same because and I, you know, I don't mind people coming at me for, for for that opinion. That's fine. But growing up with that, and then the West Belfast mommy, you know, that's been let be like to my brothers. Do you want tea? Do you want tea, Nadia? You know, get the tea on. You know, <laughs> so ah, oh, every bit of me mm. fought against. How dare you not treat me as an equal? Yeah. How dare you? And like, if that Nadia knew that I'd come full circle, and I'm like, I'm not equal. I'm yeah. entirely different. Yeah. And there's an honor in that and not that victim. Yeah. It's a really hard thing for, I think, 
you know, even I, I work in a corporate environment as well and I have done there is definitely absolute disadvantages for being female in those environments. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, not, I recently had this conversation with Alex also that, you know, Alex, whilst I'm trying really hard and I actually really want to drop into my feminine and the softness, I actually love being there, Finn. Yeah. I'm still going out into a world that I have to armor up for. Yeah. In order just to be treated respectfully, you know, it's such a huge thing. Like, I'd love to know, like, from what you've been sharing and like from what you witness in your women's circles and stuff as well. It's like, from a men's perspective, what do you need from us, or what do you want from us, not need? We, I think, women validate it. I mean, you're not going to breastfeed anytime soon, Finn. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I think uh, in the points you, I think men have hardships and expectations that we do not have. Yeah. And likewise. Yeah. And I think there needs to be a coming together of honoring those things and actually bringing them to light. It is like in one circle recently, four of the women had had altercations with their male bosses. Hmm. And one of the girls was, you know, saying, oh, it does really matter that he's a man. And I was like, it does matter that he that he is a man, you yeah. know. And we're at that age, you know, I'm 37 as well, that the males are like 20 years older, say. And, yeah. you know, they are, they are the not all of them there are some beautiful men that are in the top and there is changes happening but a lot of men at in a high position in a workplace are not those that would attend a men's circle or open to healing or open to seeing anything but uh what they need yeah in terms of in, in like i say you do mm -hmm. and that conversation is totally different when it's a man to a man yeah. Than it is from me going up and that 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 interaction, you know. So I think we need to start being really honest with each other. Mm. Yeah, and that's so just, big. It is. It's my husband manages a restaurant. The owner of the restaurant that's front of house is female. Most he's the manager. She works in the restaurant with him. And he'll be like, you know. A customer that's not really happy with the owners here they don't want to speak to her because what could she do yeah. it, it, there, there is like a lessening of you know it feels like a man could get something more done <laughs> that is still in our society yeah so we 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 are still having to I, well, I'm dropping less into I don't prove myself, but there's still battles there for me. Ben. Yeah, one hundred percent. And that's the thing. Like, and it's looking as like again, it just comes back as like with the especially with the older gen. Like, how do we change something that's so just ingrained? Like, I know like we have the opportunity with ourselves, our generation, and, and like the mm -hmm. next generation to bring change in and facilitate that. But it's just like, yeah, like it's just it's still like it's like I can't even fathom like that push against that you face on a day to day basis that like men just like, we just can't fathom what that is and what that feels like. Mm. But I feel I think... like it's sorry, yeah, like, but I could feel like I'm just going to say, I like, guess that's where it needs to be our responsibility to make the change now for what we can, what we can yeah. support now. And that's going to be the difference then. We, we are, and you know, the generation, like our kids, they'll not tolerate it. Yeah. They'll not tolerate it. I, yeah. I really don't think so. When we have so validated their right to have their opinion and their feelings, um, there, there has, you know, I can even see it in like the younger generations within the offices. Like there's a, there's a bit of a, there's just a the tolerance is lessened and 
Oh, the eye rolls that go on when, when you know, you're female that has an opinion in an office and things like that. And I think also if we as women can 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 get back into our intuitive, healed feminine, you know, that, ah, oh, for years, then that was my fight. That mm-hmm. was, and dare somebody breathe in that direction and I was going to be on them. And like, that's not conducive to an open conversation either. Yeah. You know, and that they, that is my wound in terms of, you know, that essence of seeing me as an equal. Don't degrade me for simply having boobs, you know. Um, and less and less do I feel that need to fully head on battle that. And it's not a submission. It's an absolute knowing of my value, yeah. regardless of what he he thinks, mm. they think, yeah. anyone thinks. Yeah. And then the energy changes then. I'm not entering that arena. I don't need to. I yeah. know my worth. Yeah, you're not trying to prove it like you know it. No, no more proving. I've hung up my proof boots. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, it's a, it's a, it's, you know, no matter what the relationship is, it, there's two people in it. Yeah. And we both have, you know, if I'm like, well, no matter what, I'm going to go at you for, you know, making me feel small or, or wanting me to be smaller. I'm like, if, if he is not somebody that I want to lean into in terms of be like him, or if I'm not like, wow, you're super brilliant, then why am I trying to prove myself to him? Yeah. Yeah. Or anybody, you know? So And that's it. Like, and it's it's like that in itself is even just surrendering more into your feminine with it. Cause like rather than dropping into that unhealthy masculine to fight that fight, it's like actually yes. it was like I'm like, I know my self-worth. I know who I am. And oh. I was like, and I'm honoring fucking that in that space rather than just fighting for the sake of fighting. And it's exhausting. Yeah. It actually did me, it has always done me a disservice. Yeah. Rightfully, wrongfully. But see, like recently someone said, you know, I don't actually think that he knows all you do here. And I was like, hey, I don't care. If he wants to have that conversation with me, he can. Yeah. I know I'm shit hot at my job. You know what I mean? But you, you don't want to go and tell him? No, mm. I don't. Yeah. And that was, like, I don't even think of a said to my mom and dad that that was my reaction, that they would believe me. Like, I, <laughs> um, but it's so much more freeing then. It's yeah. so much nicer and softer. And my body feels better for it. Mm. The, the, that resistance, it is futile yeah. you know yeah huge so huge oh man like this conversation i knew this conversation could go anywhere and it could go on for <laughs> ages but like i'm super aware of your time as well Dang. um yeah like i feel like to start kind of winding this in i'd love to just kind of hear from yourself like i know we've touched on it before is like but like you working like working with the work that you do supporting women like holding the women's circles and stuff like that as well and like it's so fucking powerful like and i love that like you're going into like clubs and like communities and stuff like that and bringing women together in that way it's like i'd love to just kind of what what do you feel what can you see for yourself in the next couple of years changing in this space for both men and women like what's what can you feel coming through for that I remember coming back. So I was in Australia and I came back here about 13, 14 years ago. And like, I don't know if you remember this then, but there weren't a whole lot of gyms in Ireland yeah. growing up. Right. It was just a big commercial gym, like what, like <laughs> this, the leisure centers and parts of hotels and stuff. <laughs> and like, who does she think she is going to the gym? Yeah. You know, that, that sort of energy of like, who goes to him thinking he's all that going to a gym? You know, that sort of. But when I came back here, gyms were popping up everywhere. Yeah. And actual physical health, you know, even in the younger generation, it's like, it's really cool to be at the gym now. Yeah. It's really, really like, I know I have two younger cousins. They're probably actually about 23 and 24 now, but like they were 18 and getting out of school and going to the gym with their mates. And I was like, 
that was not what happened when we grew up. And I feel that for our future Mm -hmm. here. I feel that for, you know, someone, there was a lady that uh, came last week of the week before and she needed assistance. She was in a wheelchair and she needed assistance. Her mom was meant to come with her, but it ended up being her auntie. So her auntie didn't know what she was coming to at all. Her auntie uh, had no idea. She was just, yeah. And uh, so she came and her auntie was like, I don't know. I can't guess her. She was not. She was an older generation, you know. A, I presume a teacher. Yeah. And I was like, and all the women in the group were. I felt their like energy be like, oh, she doesn't know what she's here for, <laughs> you know. That sort. Of, that sort of. Oh, how is she gonna accept that? And you know, in my non-proven state, I just showed up as my authentic self. And at the end of it, she said, "I've never been." What did she say? I've never been in a space that the listening was so powerful and the compassion was so powerful. So whether, and like what I took away from that was whether cacao and circles are your gig or not, the reality of it is, Finn, we all want to be heard, seen and respected. Mm. And I mean, my circles are not like I love spirituality. I love all that stuff. But knowing my demographic, I was like, I'm not nothing about my circles. And my, you know, I do meditation, I do journaling, we do a topic of discussion, uh, we have tea. You know, I kept it really like borderline because I want anybody from yeah. any culture, any background whether you're the pillar of a Catholic church or you're in the mosque, I I don't want it to conflict because at the end of the day, I believe that whether you pray or manifest or whatever words you use integrally, we're deeply human and Mm. we want to feel connection and respected and loved. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that so much. So that's 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 what I see happening. The yeah. gym, the gym craze, I think the well-being craze is and it the revolution of healing. I feel like look at the world, Finn. Yeah. This is this is this is the time. And you know, Finn, if me and you were sat in our own houses and thinking, sure, what's the point? <clears throat> you know, and then we go to our Instagram feeds and see the terror in the world. I think, you know, there's a big contrast within, I think, the well-being community at the minute as how do we show up and be relevant whilst there's yeah. there's, there's burning, murdering, killing going on in the world. I think now more than ever, we need to heal and 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 keep showing up with love and compassion. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Love and compassion. It just keeps coming back to that. And yeah. 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 Beautiful. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Um with that, like I'll drop in like your links to to your Instagram and stuff like that in the show Thank notes you. and stuff like that. So anyone who enjoyed listening to you and wants to find out more um can give you a follow and see some of the amazing work that you do with your circles and stuff up in Dungannon is mainly where you hold them, is it? Dungan and Portage Iron at the minute. Yeah. 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 And then the world thing. And then the world. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank Amazing. you.